guys, it's Andy, personal trainer at The Writing Gym, and I'm so excited to share this episode with you. In this episode, Annalisa talks with best-selling author Bob Berg about his newest book with co-author John David Mann, The Go-Giver Influencer. Speaking about influence, how much have you affected others lately? You know, a book can help you to massively scale your business, but where to start? How do you write it? How do you target your ideal clients, speak their language, and begin that important conversation that leads to you being hired? Laurel Elite Books is a full-service hybrid publisher that takes you from idea to soul. To see if you are the right fit for what they offer, apply for your Laurel Elite business scaling consultation at laurelelite.com. They're Laurel Elite because they're cut above the rest. As always, we will include the links in the show notes. Thank you so much and happy writing. And now to introduce our fabulous guest, Annalisa Parent, the coach in the writing gym. Annalisa, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here today, Andy. And now let me tell you a little something about our guest, Bob Berg. Bob is a repeat guest here on the Writing Gym Podcast, and we're so excited to have him again. In their best-selling business parable, The Go-Giver, and then their follow-up, The Go-Giver Leader, Bob Berg and John David Mann challenged the conventional wisdom about success. Now they're back with a new and equally compelling story about the power of genuine influence in business and beyond. The Go-Giver Influencer, A little story about a most persuasive idea tackles the paradox of achieving what you want by focusing on the other person's interests. No, not in a way that is self-sacrificial, but rather in such a way that all parties benefit greatly. This results in both immediate and long-term success. Bob Berg speaks all over the world on topics related to the go-giver, as well as what he calls ultimate influence. While his total book sales number well over a million copies, His and Man's original book has itself sold over 700,000 copies and has spurred an international movement. Their new book, however, The Go-Giver Influencer, might just be their most important book of all. Thank you so much for joining us today, Bob. My pleasure, Andy. Always great to be with the two of you. Thank you. So I want to jump in right away, Bob, and talk to you a little bit. You know, this isn't your first Go-Giver book. It's uh, number four, if I can count correctly. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Wonderful. Great. And, um, you know, many of our listeners are business owners who would like to have uh, their own book that showcases their expertise. And certainly that's something that you can speak to. I'm sure they would love to say that they had sold 700,000 books. It's an amazing accomplishment. Congratulations to to both you and John. Um, So talk to us a little bit about how the Go-Giver books as a series or even the original have helped to expand your brand and increase brand recognition to grow your business. Well, it, it took my business to a whole new level. Uh, I had had a number of books out previously, and the space I was in was really, I guess you could say, for lack of a better term, business networking. It was about how to create relationships and uh, how to how to create a, a referral-based business, and that's usually what I spoke of. My first big book in that genre was uh, Endless Referrals, Network Your Everyday Contacts into Sales, and um, and that one sold, I think, now about 300,000 copies. But that's been out for a long time. That first came out, the first edition came out in 94, wow. I think. And that was a book in which, yeah, it, it certainly helped me build my speaking practice, which is why I wrote that book in the first place. Um, I had been speaking for a few years and had achieved a, a relative level of success. And then one... Uh, at one event that I was at a National Speakers Association event, a number of people said, Berg, you need to, you know, to write a book now because it's going to take your career to the next level. Uh, you're going to be able to charge more money. You're going to be better positioned as an expert or, you know, as an authority in your field. It's going to. Uh, and so that book came out and I used it as a proactive marketing tool. I, I did, I think in over the, the 10 years that that book was first out. I think I may have gotten one or two speaking engagements because a client called 
okay, for, because the book had gone through their organization. But that was it. Generally, I use that book as a proactive marketing tool. Um, once the go-giver came out, it was a whole different story. Uh, at that point, I, I would get calls from uh, potential speaking clients where the book had gone through their organization mm -hmm. and now they just want to know, you know, what's your fee and are you available? Not that, not that it's just like all the time, but a whole lot. <laughs> and it was a lot more fun, you know, obviously. Uh, now, I think a big reason for this was because it was a story. It was a, it, it's a, the go-giver is a parable. Uh, ex, uh, I will say expertly, co-authored by John David Mann, because as you know, because you both know John, uh, he's the lead writer in the storyteller. I'm a how-to guy, you know, right? John is a magnificent writer. So, um, uh, and that's the reason I think that, that the book has done so well. Uh, as you know, stories connect. They connect on a heart level. And so the, the message, I think the timing was right with the message, um, but it was his wonderful writing skills that I think really made that connection and, you know, the book took off. So that, that added a lot uh, in terms of how I was positioned in the marketplace. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit about that? Because all of your books are very well written, very high quality. What do you think is the importance of strong writing and strong storytelling, even in a business book to make it successful? Well, I think it has to, to be a good book, okay? I, I think the product itself has to be really good or it's not going to have legs mm -hmm. because you can have a great title. And, and there's no question, titles sell books. Uh, you know, you, you, people do judge a book by its cover, including the title, despite the old adage mm -hmm. to the opposite, right? Uh, but you can have a great title and it will get, get some, some eyeballs uh, but unless the, the product itself is really good, it, it's not going to, it's not going to last. On the other hand, you can have a wonderfully written book with the best information in the world. And if it's not packaged correctly, mm -hmm. uh, if it has a, a bad title, or when I say bad, I mean just one that isn't appealing to the, the marketplace, or it's not marketed well, you can have uh, boxes full of them in your garage. Right. Um, I'll tell you uh, an interesting story, and I, I don't know if you know this story about the It's Not About You title. Did we ever share that with you? We did. We talked about that, I think, and you, you spoke about it. But we'd love to hear that story because I was thinking about that as you were talking about titles. So please tell us that story. To me, this is one of the biggest lessons that I ever relearned because I already knew it and still made the mistake. But uh, uh, once we had the go-giver out, and again, it was selling very well. And after a couple of years, the, well, the publisher asked us to do a, a, another one. This was not a parable. This was more of an application base. And this was called Go Givers Sell More. And that one's done well. It sold over 150,000 copies. And we have no complaints about that one. It's, a, it's more of a how-to. And it, we know it's not going to have the same emotional appeal as the Go Giver, but very happy with it. But then they asked us to do another parable. And we tried to come up with a, a really great title that we thought fans of The Go-Giver would just totally embrace. So we, we looked at uh, the, uh, and we knew we wanted the, the story to be about leadership and influence, uh, really about leadership of the, the tour, inexorably you know, entwined. Um, but we decided that to be, because of the law number three, the law of influence, which mm -hmm. is your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first. We thought a great title would be, it's not about you. And we thought, well, people will just really be, you know, fans of the go-giver was okay. Law number three, and they're going to dig deep into it and the whole thing. Well, I'll just tell you both that, that the marketplace stayed away in droves. Okay. <laughs> just didn't sell. And now, by the way, it, the book was as good as The Go-Giver. John David Mann's writing was extraordinary, as it always is. We knew we had a story based on solid principles. In fact, people who read the book, many of them said it was better than the original book. So we knew that wasn't the issue. So what was? Well, for about two years after we realized this was going to be a clunker uh, in terms of sales, we started doing a very uh, scientific survey. We asked people. 
And so we, so I, I really wasn't getting any answers that I, I totally bought into until one day I was talking to Tom Ziegler, Zig's of the son of the late Zig Ziegler. And I said, you know, Tom, it's interesting. I said, I, I know this book is as, as good as the go-giver. The message is there. You think it's not about you people would really kind of get where we're coming from. And he said, well, Bob, I got to tell you, he said, the title, you know, if I pick up a book, it's called, it's not about you. I just might be thinking, well, then why would I want to read it? <laughs> uh, you know, that's actually, he's much like his dad. He has that real common sense, you know, that, that, now that so that's one thing, but here's the other thing. It also goes a step further. One reason the go-giver sold so well is because many people bought it as a gift to give to others. Now you think about this. You can give someone a gift book. You can give someone a book with the title, The Go-Giver, and it's a compliment. It's like you're telling this person, you know, this is you, right? You give a person a book with the title, <laughs> It's Not About You, Ooh. and they just might be thinking, what's this person trying to tell me? <laughs> it's, like, it's like giving somebody a bottle of Scope mouthwash, <laughs> right? What are they saying? And so we decided that John and I kind of miscalled this one. And, uh, and, and so we asked the publisher, you know, if to do something that's really unprecedented. And that is, would you let us just rename the book and re-release it? And we did update it a little bit. We updated the story in a couple of parts, changed the ending a little bit, made it even better. But changed the title to what it always should have been, The Go-Giver Leader right mm -hmm. which now tied in with an established brand it made no that left no doubt about what it was and of course it was it was set in the same fictional city with some of the characters from the uh, the first book being referenced and so forth and took place in the same restaurant and and, and so forth so you know we again we relearned a, a lesson and that is you know it's not what we think is clever or good it's what the marketplace does the value is always in the eyes of the beholder Mm -hmm. And we needed to provide something that they would immediately grasp as being of, of value. One of the things that I really love about that story is, one, your vulnerability and your willingness to share a lesson that you learned, even when you were at a level of your career where you had a very high level of expertise. And secondly, you know, I think about, um, you know, professional baseball players, for example, they still strike out. They've been doing this nearly their entire lives and they still strike out. And so all of us at any phase, um, whether it's we're thinking about our business or we're thinking about a writing career, we still have lessons to learn. And I just really appreciate the humility that you approach oh, this you. lesson. It's just really beautiful. And I think that's a really good example for all of our listeners. And it's also an inspiration because we all make mistakes no matter where we are in the phase of whatever project we're doing in our lives, we have lessons to learn. So thank you for your vulnerability and for sharing that lesson with us so that we can learn from that too. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And while we're talking about lessons, I, I really want to talk about your your newest book, The Go-Giver Influencer. And uh, I shared with John recently, and, and I want to share with you, Bob, um, I had to read this book in very small increments um, because and it's just really beautiful. But to the ideas that you feature, um, they, they meant so much to me. So we've got uh, in this book, for those of you who are listening right now and haven't picked up a copy of The Go-Giver Influencer, uh, take the next exit, stop at the bookstore and grab one. Um, so it's a, it's a dual parable, which is a new venture for you artistically um, as far as what you and John came up with in that we've got these parallel stories that come together well, at the beginning and the middle right. and at the end. Um, and, and so it's an interwoven story where we have two individuals who are learning similar parallel track lessons. And I'm going to let you pick up from there, Bob, and tell us a little bit about what the book is about. Well, yeah, it's really about two people who each have something that the other one needs. So you'd think it would be a business marriage made in heaven. Yet it turns out to be anything but that. Uh, in fact, every conversation the two protagonists have with each other, they tend to get further apart. And neither of them can understand why. 
and neither of them can understand what the other person's even thinking. And they both come to realize through the mentors they, they uh, attain, in a sense, that one of the reasons why they're not understanding each other is because they're not trying to understand each other. <laughs> they're thinking about themselves, right? And influence, you know, when you think about it on a very, very basic level, influence can be defined as the ability to move a person or persons to a desired action, usually within the context of a specific goal. That's the definition and it's the result, but it's not the, the essence or the substance of, of influence. Uh, influence is really, it's about pull. It's about um, attraction. We attract people to first to ourselves and only then to our ideas. And that's why influence, rather than being about push, Mm -hmm. Right. You never, you, know, you never hear people say, wow, that Tom or that Danielle, she is so influential. She has a lot of push. <laughs> right. She sure is pushy. Wow. What a great, you know, no, she has a lot of pull. That's what influence is. And so how do we do that? How do we pull rather, which is sustainable uh, as opposed to push, which is confrontation or manipulation or you know any a compliance or, or which is not sustainable at best it's unsustainable at worst people will sabotage the process completely so how do we pull well we we discover their wants their needs their desires we ask ourselves what what in what I'm asking this person to do how does that align with their values what problems for them am I solving or helping to solve? And when we ask ourselves these questions and approach it that way, uh, intelligently and thoughtfully and genuinely and authentically, not as a way to, again, manipulate another person into doing our will, but as a way of building everyone in the process, that's what we call genuine influence. It's getting the results you want when dealing with or working with others in such a way that everyone comes away better off than they were before. And everyone feels good about the situation, about themselves, about one another. That's genuine influence. And what we do is we just, you know, we provide five steps, if you will. We call them secrets, but they're really not secrets. I mean, they're things we, you know, I think we all intuitively know. Uh, but we've maybe just outlined them in a way and through a story to, to help get the point across. That's great. And one of the images that you paint in this book, if you will, uh, you say something like, and this is a paraphrase, you know, having your emotions in the passenger seat versus having them in the driver's seat. And firstly, I just want to say how much I really appreciated that image because I, I felt like it was a really apt, just spot on description of, of a healthy relationship with our emotions. And I really appreciated that. And for our listeners who are perhaps struggling to write a business book or to come up with those kinds of frameworks to explain their ideas or their concepts to articulate what it is, can you talk a little bit about how you, know, you conceptualize that, how perhaps you worked with John to conceptualize how you were going to make your message more concrete to deliver it to the reader? Yeah, well, the one you brought up, I, I, I love that you asked about how John and I did that because really we both got that from a mutual friend of ours, Dondi Scumachi. I don't know if you know Dondi or, mm -hmm. or not. She's a fantastic leader and just an amazing human being and a, a mentor to the multitudes. I just, you know, we, we love Dondi. And what she says is, because you know, we talk about, she and I have discussed emotions a lot in terms of what drives people. Okay, and uh, you know, the, the, the first loss, master your emotions. And that's where it all begins because it's only when you are in control of your emotions, when you're in control of yourself, that you're even in a position to take a potentially negative situation or person and turn it into a win for everyone involved. Uh, but that's easier said than done because we're remote, you know, as, as human beings, we are emotional creatures. We all are. Now, we'd like to think of ourselves as logical. And to a certain extent, we are, but we're pretty emotionally driven, right? As mm -hmm. human beings, we make major decisions based on emotion. We back up those emotional decisions with logic. 
we mm -hmm. rationalize, which if you break the word up into, it simply means we tell ourselves rational lies. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not telling people to deny your emotions. We're not telling people to forego your emotions. First, that wouldn't be logical, right? Because we're emotional. Uh, but it's also not necessary. Emotions are a wonderful part of life. They give it, bring us joy. They make life worthwhile. No, we're saying you need to be the master of your emotions as opposed to your emotions being the master of you. Now, Dandi Skumachi said, by all means, take your emotions along for the ride, but make sure you are driving the car. And so from that, we take, okay, you're in the driver's seat, right? Your logical mind is driving. Your emotions are, are in the passenger seat, seatbelt fastened. They're comfortably but securely tucked in. Now, while you're driving, you can certainly take counsel of your emotions. Our emotions actually have wisdom to share with us. But driving the car itself... It needs to be your logical mind. And one of the mentors in the story, uh, the judge, she tells Jackson that, you know, if, if you allow your emotions to drive the, your car, you're putting yourself at the mercy of a drunk driver. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, again, it's just creating those. It's taking that basic idea that Dondi shared with us. And we credit her in the acknowledgments of, of the book for that. Uh, but... Um, uh, but taking that basic idea and just sort of, again, creating images around that, that we can all relate to. You know, you think about a, a drunk driver driving a car, you wouldn't allow that to happen. So are you going to let your emotions, right, that uncontrolled part of you be in charge, right? right. No, not if you want to create the environment where you make the best decisions. And to the degree you make the best decisions, that's the degree you're going to get the right results. You're not always going to get the right results or best results just because you make the right decision, but it's going to increase your chances immeasurably. Thank you for that. And I'm sorry, Andy, I'm hogging all the questions, but I'm really so excited about this book. Um, so no spoilers here, but uh, animals uh, feature largely in this book. And I see you're wearing your furry friends shirt. And I know that that's a cause that's very important to you as a person. So talk to us a little bit about bringing your own passions that are outside of sort of that are part of who you are as a person and outside of your business life into a business book. Yeah. And John and Anna are also both animal lovers. And so, um, you know, it was very easy for us to put that part uh, of our hearts into that, into that message. So it was great to be able to, to take something like a, that's a very serious topic we believe such as influence, uh, the ways, the way people are, especially these days, miscommunicating in so many ways with so much, uh, especially in the political realm with so much vitriol and insults. And, you know, if, if you don't agree with me, not only are you wrong, but you're evil, right? And so we really feel that, that, that influence is an important topic, but to be able to have that sort of backstory, if you, I'm not sure if it's a back, not backstory, but, but that the, the, the underlying story mm -hmm. being that it's about animals and how wonderful animals are and how loyal and fantastic they're, you know, angels clothed in fur, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you know, we just, we, we both love animals. So very easy and, and very joyful to be able to include that in, in the story is a big part. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this isn't your first book. We've already pointed that out. You are clearly successful in what you're doing. Uh, met, some entrepreneurs or aspiring author entrepreneurs might ask, you know, you've got successful books, you've got a successful business. Why bother to write another one? Well, I think there gets to be a certain point where you just feel you have something to say and that you want to share. And yeah, that, I, is there a better reason? I don't know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I think that that's really great. And it's really inspiration <laughs> for, you know, some, some business owners just want one book and, and they're fine with that. And some of them oh, really fall in love with writing. And, and of course, I love that well, as someone yeah, who's passionate you, you about do, writing. Yeah, you're, you're a writer and you love writing. John loves writing. I don't. Okay. I, <laughs> I, I always say, and I certainly didn't make this thing up, but, but you know, I, I often say I don't like writing books. I like having written books. 
Okay. Mm. And so it's not my favorite thing. It's it, what happens is I sometimes feel as though there's a message, something I want to say. And so the, the best way to get it out there, not necessarily the best way, but what I found to be the best way is to have a book and uh, that you do a written version and an audio version and however people are going to want to receive that, that's what they're going to do. And, um, you know, so you, you do that, but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know how many more I have that I necessarily, I kind of feel like this message, this, and I have a book called adversaries into allies, which is sort of the how to version of, of this book in a sense. Mm -hmm. And I, I think those two books, the, this new one, the go-giver influencer and adversaries into allies are probably my two favorite books where more, more of my heart mm -hmm. is in those two books than in anything else. Um, but, uh, certainly endless referrals was a, a great book for me to, to, to have. And, uh, but again, that was totally utilitarian. Uh, that was because I, I, it was good for the business to have that book. It wasn't necessarily something I felt I just had to write or I was going to, you know, explode. No, but, um, but that served that purpose as well. And hopefully it added value to a lot of lives. And so whichever way you take it from, you know, you hope it has, has good, uh, a good outcome. Well, I'm certainly glad that you wrote it and that you found John to help you to share that message and get it out into the world because, you know, you've touched one life over here. It really meant a lot to me. And I say that totally sincerely. I completely mean that this will be one of my top 10 favorite books ever. So thank you. Wow. Well, it's touched my heart there. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so Andy, I've been a question hog, so I'll let you uh, ask our last question. Are, are we asking the last question or can I ask one right before oh, that? Please. Have, a, have an interesting This question. will be the penultimate. This, yes. yes. Exactly. Um, so you talked earlier about how, you know, having your first book grew your client base um, and how, uh, you know, that had a very positive influence on your career. Did you find that, you know, after, you know, publishing The Go-Giver and really, I mean, creating this fantastic series with John, has that also change the quality of client that comes mm. to you? Has that made the, you know, the, the clients that come to you, you know, m more invested or more serious? How has that changed the quality of them? That's a fantastic question. The answer is, is yes, because what's happened in this case is the book often will go through an entire company or through a leadership team or through a sales team. So they've already invested emotionally in the book. And it's, well, this is how we want, this is the culture we want for our company. Mm -hmm. We want you to come in to talk about this. Okay, they're invested in it. Mm -hmm. So yes, the, the quality of the client in this case is also, has, has dramatically risen. Mm -hmm. Great question, Andy. Thank it you. Was a great, that was a great, it's the first time I've ever been asked that question. <laughs> Thanks. Thank um, and now, and now the ultimate question, which I know we've asked you before, but I feel like with each and every time people come up with something different, um, if you had one piece of advice and we'll change it a little bit, but to, to offer, to offer aspiring entrepreneurs slash authors, what would that be? Well, it, it would be to understand that if you're an author who is looking to, to have a book out there for any reason other than your own, you know, sense of joy in having written a book, you need to approach it as a business. Okay. Which takes nothing away from the quality or the joy or the righteousness or, you know, whatever. It just means that you need to approach it as a business. Uh, I mean, that's one reason why people go to you right? Yes. They go to the both of you because they're going to get it done professionally. They're going to have counsel. They're going to have attention. They're going to have someone who knows the business end of it better than they do and who can guide them along. Mm. So yeah, by all means, uh, you know, if this is going to be something you're doing, not as a, not just as a hobby, but as a way to accomplish something, then yeah, you need to approach it as a business because that's exactly what it is. Excellent advice. Thank you so much for joining us today, Bob. Um, for our listeners, check out the show notes. There will be links to Bob's website and links where you can purchase all of his books and you can be one of the many millions he sold. <laughs> <laughs> um, and thank you so much, Annalisa, for joining us today um, and you know, really sharing with us the experience that you had with Bob's amazing book. Um, 
with John David Mann, the Go-Giver Influencer. So everybody run out, pick up your copy today. Uh, and Annalisa will talk to you soon. And for our lovely listeners, Bob has given us some great, great advice today. But if you love the Writing Gym podcast and you really like all of these tips and find them very valuable, think about how much faster you will get published with a supportive team of experts on your side. Laurel Elite helps business owners to write, publish, and sell client magnet books to scale their businesses. Just like Bob has just shared with us, approach your book like a business and Laurel Elite will help you do, to do this. Go to www.laurelelite.com to check them out. And of course, there are going to be links in the show notes. Thank you so much for joining us here to pump up your writing on the Writing Gym podcast. Happy writing. <laughs>